Hey everyone, this is Christy. If you don't know me, my name is Christy with Time to Profit. And what I do is I help business owners, especially those that are sole, um, small businesses, sole proprietors, consultants, win more clients. And I help them win more clients by creating a rock solid sales strategy, but also strengthening their sales skills so they gain more comfort and confidence in having sales conversations with potential prospects. And the reason that this is so important to me and that I do this is because not only is sales such an important skill for business, but it is also one of those skills that when you master it, it changes your whole life. When you get confident with sales, you will notice that you are more confident in all kinds of different conversations in your life, that life really opens up in cool ways because you learn how to ask for what you want, you learn how to be confident talking to other people, and it's just a really incredible skill to have in terms of creating the life that you want. So that is why I love sales so much. Um, today, what I want to talk about as it relates to sales is assumptions. So, right, you've probably heard that quote about what happens when you make assumptions. I'm not going to say it because uh, it sounds, you know, super positive, but there might be the word ass involved in it. And here's the thing. I chose this topic today because there's some misconceptions around assumptions. Uh, but one of those is that we shouldn't make them when the reality is we are going to make them. We are human. It is completely natural to make assumptions. But if we're not conscious of that, if we're not paying attention to that, I have seen time and time again where the assumptions that clients and business owners are making about their clients actually has a huge effect on their ability to win potential customers and not in a positive way. Um, and I wanna talk to you today about why it is that we make assumptions, how your assumptions can hurt your sales process and your sales conversations, and what you can do about it, how you can actually use assumptions to amplify your sales and win more clients and have them be a really positive thing. So are you ready? So let's dive right into it today. Let's just talk about why do we make assumptions? So without getting into a ton of science, the brain wants to simplify things. Your brain always wants to have, it wants to make decisions very quickly, very rapidly. It's always trying to figure out friend, foe, safe, not safe, right? This comes back to our very innate human drive for survival. And so making assumptions about whether something is safe or unsafe or someone is good or bad or positive or negative, it's perfectly natural. It is how our brains work and how they keep us safe and how they help us to really process a lot of information very, very quickly. Our brain is always looking for clues to read ahead. And I mean, right, have you ever been, this is why it's so hard to edit something that you've written because your brain already assumes that it knows what you wrote because it knows what you wanted to write. So it jumps ahead and sees what it thinks is there. This happens in our interactions with all kinds of people in our lives, especially in our business lives and in our sales conversations. So why is this a bad thing then? How can this hurt your sales? Well, here's the thing. Typically, when we make assumptions in the absence of information, there's one of two things that happens. The first is that we assume the worst possible scenario, and that is a protective mechanism, that if we have this expectation that this bad thing is happening, that we think we'll be able to prepare for it. And so in turn, that, that will keep us safe. So one of the ways that assumption hurt assumptions hurt us in sales is that we tend to assume the worst case scenario. Now, this isn't a sales example, but how um, often have you heard the phrase or someone's been like, hey, I really need to talk to you, right? Super simple phrase, totally no context for that. But generally, I know for me, when someone says I really need to talk to you, I automatically make the assumption that they have something negative to say. That my mind's like, oh no, what did I do wrong? Or what's the bad news? Or what's happening, right? So this is the way my brain is keeping me safe. It's like go into protection mode, hide, 
right? And that's totally natural, but it actually really puts us in a position in sales where when we have our defenses up, because we're making assumptions and assuming the worst possible scenarios and outcomes from our prospects, it's hard for our clients to let their guard down or our potential clients to let their guard down. The second thing that happens in the absence of information is that we assume our potential clients think the same way we do because that's who we know the best. So if we don't know anything, we assume that people are like us. So for example, if I am uncomfortable talking about money or I'm uncertain about my prices or what I'm charging, I'm gonna assume that my potential client is going to think it's expensive or isn't gonna to wanna to pay that much, right? And like if I don't like mushrooms, I'm gonna assume other people don't like mushrooms too, even though I have absolutely no evidence for that, for that to be true. So a lot of times we're projecting our own thoughts and beliefs about ourselves, about money, about what people want onto our potential clients. Now, why is this a bad thing? So when we make assumptions, the worst thing that happens is that we lose curiosity because we think we already know. So if I think I I think I know something about a prospect, I forget to ask them. I forget to check in. I've lost that element of curiosity and oftentimes I'm addressing what I'm assuming to be true for that client when I have no evidence that that's true. And so then I'm not able to be present with the client, to tailor my conversation to the potential client, to really hear what the potential client is saying because I'm super caught up in my own assumptions about what I believe to be true for that potential client. And so we really like lose our ability to hear what's actually happening and we lose our curiosity. And oftentimes when we do that, we go into a convince mentality where we wanna convince them of something that they might not even believe to be true versus being in a conversation and problem solving mode. And when we do that, we lose our prospects engagement and we lose their attention. So what can we do instead of losing our curiosity because of these assumptions that we naturally are going to make as humans, right? How do we actually do something different to create a different result? So the first thing that I want you to do is before you go into a potential convert or a conversation, before you engage in a conversation with the potential client, ask yourself, what do you think they believe? What are you assuming about that potential client, right? So ask yourself, what, is, what are all the things I believe this potential client is gonna think about my pricing? What is it that I think this potential client is gonna think about my services? What is it that I think my potential client is gonna think about this timeline? What is it that I think the potential client is gonna think about my expertise, right? And write it down because once we see what those assumptions are, we put it on paper and get it out of our head, it's a lot easier to make good discernments about whether or not we have evidence for those assumptions. So you can even go deeper and ask, why do you believe that? Why do you believe that about the client? Why are you assuming that that's what they believe or that's how they see things or that's their point of reference? And that will give you a lot of information. So first get clear on what you are assuming. Like just put it out there. Don't hide from yourself. Be honest with yourself because it will make it much easier for you to have a clear conversation with the prospect. The second thing I want you to do is to ask yourself, if you didn't believe those assumptions, how would you interact with the potential client? How would you approach them? How would you bring up this conversation? My guess is that nine out of 10 times, you would broach this with curiosity. You would ask them questions. You would see what they actually believe and think, right? If you didn't have those assumptions. So just ask yourself, if I didn't believe that the client thought this, if I wasn't assuming that the client believed this, how would I approach this interaction? Super powerful tool. The third thing I want you to do, I don't know if you remember, but before, earlier in this video, I talked about our tendency with our assumptions to believe the worst case scenario, right? And if we believe a worst case scenario, we're gonna sp re um, respond and act a very specific way than if we believe a best case scenario. So ask yourself, 
if I assumed the best case scenario about what the client was believing, right? So let's talk about pricing. That is something that so many small business owners struggle with is conversations around money and pricing. If I assumed that they thought they were getting a great deal and it was totally worth the investment, how would that change my approach? What would I do differently, right? So notice how all of a sudden that is gonna change the way that I interact with the client and I approach that conversation. So that's just a great question. If I was assuming the best possible scenario, if I was assuming that they believed this was gonna solve a problem, that they had a need for this, that I was gonna be able to help them, that what I was offering was better than what they had before, that they thought they were getting a really good value for the money. These are all things that the client might be believing if we weren't assuming the best case scenario. So if you believe that, how would you ask? And then what I want you to do is just maintain your curiosity, right? So for all of these, I want you to just make sure that when you're engaging in your conversations with your clients, that you keep your curiosity, that recognize your assumptions are gonna be there, recognize those assumptions are more often than not gonna have a negative bias, but recognize that you don't have to let the assumptions run the show. So here's what I want you to do with all of this information that we've talked about this week. I want you to think about one specific prospect or potential client that you are going to have a conversation with this week, right? One person, write down that person's name or that business owner's name and then ask yourself, what am I assuming about this potential client? What am I assuming that they believe to be true? Do I have evidence to support it? And if so, what is that evidence? If I didn't believe this, if I didn't have this assumption, what would I do? How would I act? And if I assumed the best possible scenario for this conversation, how would I approach this potential client? I think you'll be amazed to see how much of what you believe about your potential clients isn't rooted in fact or evidence, but really is truly an assumption based on either your own belief system, something someone told you, or the worst case scenario. And you'll also notice how those assumptions are framing the way that you interact with the prospect. So that's kind of your homework for this week, not kind of, that is your homework for the week. I'm gonna assume that you're gonna do it and post in the comments below. I'm eager to hear what you learn about yourself. And if you haven't had the chance, go to mytimetoprofit.com. There's some great free resources on that website, on the homepage. You can get a free sales planning tool and checklist that will help you to really start handpicking the clients you want to work with and create a plan to connect with them. And if you are watching this on the Time to Profit page but aren't a member of the Time to Profit group, make sure that you join that Time to Profit group on Facebook. You can just search for it, Time to Profit, in the search bar on Facebook and it'll say group. You will request to join, I will approve you. Um, and what's cool about that is I go much deeper into these topic and offer some other resources for the members of that group than I do here on this page. So if you're not already, make sure you join that page, download the free sales tools from mytimetoprofit.com and share with me what you learn about the assumptions that you're making with your prospects this week. Have a great week. I believe in you. I know that you are amazing at what you do. Make sure you believe in you.